Most voice agents fail because builders choose conversation flow when they need single prompt, and they choose single prompt when they need conversation flow. Today, I'm going to walk you through a very easy guide that will save you from the I should have done this differently. I'm going to walk you through when to use single prompt and when you use conversation flow for both inbound and outbound use cases. So you can figure out for yourself when complexity actually adds value and when simplicity beats complexity. I'm Alejo from Amplify Voice, and after building voice agents for many different industries, I can tell you that what kills most projects is actually wrong system design. Way more than integration issues is actually choosing the wrong path. And then one of those critical decisions is single prompt versus conversation flow. Where complexity looks like opportunity, it can also bring risks. But it's important to understand where simplicity has its limits. And today I'm going to show you how to make that decision for yourself. The single prompt versus conversation flow decision isn't about which one is better. It's about matching complexity to the actual need. Think about it like this. You wouldn't use scissors to cut a tree, but you also don't need a chainsaw to cut a piece of paper. Step one is asking yourself, what's the one main thing this voice agent needs to accomplish? Hypothetically, if everything else went wrong, but this one thing was accomplished, you could say that's a successful call. What's that one thing? Let's say it's appointment booking. If the voice agent books an appointment with the user, then we can call that a success. Well, that leads us to step two, which is mapping potential outcomes. And what that might look like for appointment booking is a simple flow where the call starts and the agent does the greeting, the user replies, we have a little bit of a, an interaction, and then we inquire whether the user is interested or not. One potential outcome is the user is not interested, and then the call ends. The other outcome is the user is interested, and we go to appointment booking, we ask if there are any more questions, and then the call ends and a single core goal that needs to get accomplished, in this case, appointment booking. For those scenarios, you don't really want to use conversation flow. It's going to take more work just to accomplish the same result. On the other hand, when there are three or more outcomes, like in the next example, that might trigger you into thinking, oh, wait, this could be appropriate for conversation flow. And when I say outcome, what I actually mean is these branches along in the road. So the call starts, the agent does the greeting, but when we get to a certain branch in the road, there are multiple reasons why a user might be calling we might take different paths depending on those reasons. And one of those paths that we take might even have another branch. So there's one, two, three, four potential outcomes for potential paths that could be walked by the user. That in your mind should automatically trigger, oh wait, that's an opportunity for conversation flow. The number four is something that I want you to keep in the back of your mind the whole time that you're designing and building your agent. The question is, what can you move to outside of the call, either before the call happens or after the call happens. I've released a deep dive on customer memory and dynamic variables that are amazing for flows that happen before the call. It gives your voice agent critical information so that it doesn't have to ask it during the call. And then after the call, I've also released a video on end of call reports. And in that video, I show you how much data you actually get from your voice provider. And what are the exact things you need to do to actually extract value from that data? Because at the end of the day, the less things that your voice agent has to handle during the call, the smoother the call will go. So let's put it all together by looking at some use cases. Remember, you can get this template in the community. It's really, really helpful to co-create with your client. It's an amazing sales tool because figuring this out live with a client buys them into the project. And we have some sales hours recordings where we go over the intricacies of how to build this conversation flow. And once we have it all mapped out with all the branches and all the functions, what we do is go to our voice provider. In this case, we're going to retail. And because I want to train your intuition, I want you to look on the left at how simple this prompt is. And it has one goal, set up an appointment for the annual checkup. This is one of the retail templates. I really like how simple and straightforward they made it. One objective, certain very specific steps, because one outcome can have multiple steps. The big question is, is how many branches in the road there are. So pretty straightforward versus a different use case. This is an outbound use case. And this one on the right is an inbound use case. It's a medical center receptionist. Everything that I'm teaching you in this video applies for both inbound and outbound. So in this case, these two use cases are interchangeable. You'll see right off the bat that the amount of situations that conversation flow can handle, they're so much broader. It can take multiple different paths from any one node based on who is calling. So does this mean that conversation flow is more flexible than single prompt? Well, if you're familiar with conversation flow, you'll see that when you go down a path and then the user suddenly changes its mind, it is not possible to just go back to the previous one. You can have these global nodes 
which are for specific situations that you always want to catch. Like when the user says, please transfer me to a human, you want that to be caught regardless of where you are in the conversation flow. But this is the big nuance that you need to understand. Once you move forward, you cannot go back. Once you check the availability and schedule the appointment, unless you have a specific path that you build or when the user says, no, 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 actually, can we do a different time? Then your voice agent is going to fail. So you have to keep thinking of all these edge cases and handle all of them. So though it can handle way more paths, you have to make sure that your client has these paths very well defined and the users don't tend to ask five different things in one conversation. That is excellent for conversation flow. Now I want to show you a different example where, in my opinion, conversation flow wasn't actually necessary and in fact might be hindering the voice agent's abilities. And that is another one of retail's templates, which you can use for yourself in retail and play around with them so you experience what I'm talking about. This is an outbound use case for patient screening. We start the call, the agent is told to say something, and then we move forward. We ask some screening questions, and then we have a branch. If it's the wrong name or is the wrong information, it's the wrong user, then we just end the call. And you see how there are several branches that lead to that node. This is something that single prompt can handle very well because all of those things just indicate that it's the wrong user, if their name is wrong or if their data is wrong. So that's very easy to handle in single prompt. But what I really want you to pay attention to is how, as I scroll right, there is only really one outcome here. We're just asking question after question after question. And there might be one of these simpler branches, which asks one follow up question and then goes back to the main branch. So these are much simpler situations for single prompt to handle. If the voice agent asks a question, the user answers, and then they realize, oh, wait, I answered wrong. I want to change my answer. There's no way for the voice agent to go back to that question. It's almost like it forgot what question it asked. Not literally, but pretty much. The one or two outcomes go with single prompt. Then more than three outcomes go with conversation flow. So if you're ever building and you get the thought, this might be over-engineered, follow that instinct. It will save you so much trouble down the road because these voice agents are not set and forget. In fact, the highest amount of value that you can give to a client is have a plan to improve the voice agent after it went to the real world, after it had conversations. How are you going to take those conversations into learnings for your voice agent such that next month it's performing even better? But that's a story for another day. Remember that the key is matching complexity to actual need. Single problem for straightforward scenarios with one or two outcomes max and conversation flow for when you have three or more outcomes and also have very well-defined paths that users tend to follow. And now you have a framework to make this decision for yourself confidently. I made this video thinking of our school community because I get asked this question every single week. But because everybody's situation is unique, people are still going to ask this question to me. Building great voice agents and a great voice AI agency takes the right guidance, but also takes the right community. And you'll quickly realize how learning and community is going to be your new superpower. So join us, come to build hours, sales hours, and Wednesday workshops. And I'd love to meet you personally in one of our four live sessions a week. And if you're building something that does not fit these examples, please comment in below. I'd love to have a conversation with you about what is right for your specific situation. And if you took something from this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps Paige and I reach other people that we can help. My name is Alejo, and remember to never stop prompting.